It's 7.30 a.m. and I've only had about five hours sleep. Good morning. Good morning. Are you okay? With our body only able to break down a unit of alcohol an hour, I'm here to find out, before they all head to class, if there is any alcohol left in our system. Nothing. Nothing! You jammy dugger! 0.12. Mmm. What did you think you were going to be? I thought I would be over the limit. Even after you've been asleep, it's still in your system. It's quite scary to think about that. Three, five. Oh, oh my God. God. That is appalling. I can't believe I'm on the drink drive limit. Let's see how Dan and Katie are feeling. How are we? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm rough. <laughs> Being pretty rough. It's good, though. It's a good feeling. Really? No. <laughs> definitely not. Were you shocked at, about some of the results last night? It's definitely the last one. Yeah. From I was kind of like steadily, you know, going up, and then the last one was just a massive leap. What so was the know. What was the last reading? My uh, last reading was uh, 1.33. Oh my god, that's crazy! You're proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> Are you interested to kind of breathalyze yourselves this morning and see? No, or too bad for me. You scared? I am scared. Yeah. yeah. Four. I'm oh, still the highest now, Are you high, higher than me? Wow. Wow! <laughs> I don't find that one, really. It's so embarrassing that I've got the highest out of all the students. That's so embarrassing. That's bad. <laughs> Do you think it's because I, you're probably used to kind of drinking like that, and I'm not? Or you're just a lightweight, <laughs> and... <laughs> You know, it was quite high for that reason, so... Has it maybe made you kind of rethink about how much you're going to drink next um, time? Hopefully. We will see. Yeah. I mean, I do... Hopefully it will be. Mm. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. <laughs> so with last night's notebooks in hand, I head to Sunderland Royal Hospital to meet Debbie Smith, an alcohol nurse specialist. I want to find out what the breathalyzer results actually mean and if our levels put us at any risk. What we did, we had uh, a notepad each. So this was Dan's, and I think he'd had 0 0.16. Yeah, and at that level, you're getting reduced eye control and your standing steadiness and reaction, so it's starting to affect you already. Debbie's chart estimates what each reading means in terms of the problems that we may face. It will vary per individual, but anything over 0.7 or twice the drink drive limit is classified as the beginning of high risk. By 10.30, he was on 57. He is now at the point of lacking uh, physical control, blurred vision and a loss of balance. I mean, this, this end result was 1.33. At 1.25, it's severe impairment of physical and sensory functions, uh, at risk of blackout or choking. The funny thing is, he seemed okay. I mean, yeah. you could tell he'd, he'd had a few, but yeah, some people. But did he seem more okay to you because you'd had a drink as well? Yeah. If you were sober, then you would maybe be able to see it a lot easier. But if you were drinking with him, then it obviously doesn't become apparent. Yeah. Um, it's time to talk through my results. So by 7 30, I hadn't had anything to drink. An hour later, I'd had one small glass of Coco Cabana, one glass of vodka and Diet Coke and half a glass of vodka diet coke and I was on 0 0.15. I then, in that hour, went up to 40. Yeah, because you'd had all them drinks the hour before, so obviously yeah. it's digested into your system, the alcohol. Mm -hmm. So already you're um, above the drink drive limit. Yeah, and then another hour later I was at 50. Yeah. And I started to drink doubles by then because the they were cheap. Was your speech slurred? Uh, loss of good judgment? But personally, with yourself, like you said, you don't really notice it as much as everybody else. And then, look, my writing got worse and worse. Um, and at this point, I was at 0 0.84 and yeah. 12, 30. That's the one I was really, really shocked at. That's when I stopped drinking. Well, at 80, it's nausea may appear and you're quite 
drunk and sloppy and again, you know, in control because I was too over your body. Yeah. Debbie's right. I thought I was fine, but in hindsight, I was definitely drunk by the time we arrived at the club. So on this, what's kind of like the top level? The top level of the charts is um, approximately 20 units of a drink and that's at the top scale and this is you want into the red, the risk level. So what's the equivalent to 20 units? What would that like, like be like? The equivalent of 20 units could be 10 pints of beer or lager depending on the strength of the lager and at 20 units or more you're putting yourself at risk of an onset of a coma and even death due to respiratory arrest. Just to see the word like death, you don't, I mean when you go out and you drink and you're with your friends, you don't possibly think it could happen to you, do you? So who do you think personally is responsible for, for this drinking situation? It's the cheap drinking and it's just the society, the way we are today. Mm. People think it's normal to be drunk all the time. It's frightening. Yeah. Drinking games will probably always be popular in the UK, but the experiments showed me how dangerous they can be. You just don't realise how much you're drinking because it's all happening so quickly. Quick drinking or binge drinking is classified as more than six units for women and more than eight units for men in one session. And with one in four adults in Britain admitting to binge drinking, it's obvious we have a problem. I'm off to meet comedian Russell Kane, who was part of a government campaign called Alcohol. It's no joke. Hey, Hi. come in. Nice to meet you. This is a glamorous dressing room. The campaign aimed to raise awareness of some of the dangers of alcohol, and Russell collaborated with a sketch about drinking games. You know, I told that story to one of my best friends, and he thought a Penguin Classic was a biscuit, eh? In fact, it reminds me of a kid I just heard of uh, from my um, hometown where I grew up. One of the last stories uh, I heard about him was him and his little crew. They were playing this game where you would take a shot and then punch each other and go, hey, I punched my mate, you'll go, tense up your arm. But the game got really out of hand and this one kid who'd obviously just been punched, had too much to drink, it all flipped round in his head. Instead of just taking a shot, he picked up the glass, he smashed it on the floor and then just drove it into his best mate's face. What's your views on drinking games? Do you think they're absolutely ridiculous and stupid and, or do, or do you think they can be played in a way that they're safe? The British people never know when to stop. It's like, yeah. drink, 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 mm. hey, look, mm. Gary's dead, Gary's yeah. dead. Cover him Zambuca and light him, send him mm. off down the Thames. Yeah. That's what he would have wanted. But why do you think that we have this tendency to, to drink so quickly? The problem with British people, we've got that nihilistic need to destroy ourselves, to go right to the edge. Yeah. And that sometimes when you look at someone and lying in the, in the floor, drunk, just a part of some British mind go, classic night out. I and mean, it always comes back to education. Yeah. We're not talking to kids about alcohol no. early enough. No. We'll do it at like 13, 14, 15, which is useless. Mm -hmm. You've already been over the park, yeah. you got drunk and had a Frenchie with a girl by the dog shit bin. At least that's what <laughs> I did. That was romantic. If you actually think about it, every sort of first kiss you've had with a boy that you, you're getting with or you're seeing, you were never sober. No. And I, I, I wasn't. And I was that's really terrible. kind of shocked. That's terrible. That. Oh my gosh. What happened to old school romance? It's quite hard for both men and women to cross the line from a friendship into a flirtation into a relationship without some sort of help. And the way British people tend to do that is with alcohol. I mean, I've gigged in America, the American couple in the front row, he, he came up to me, he saw me in the deli, he said, you're beautiful, I'm taking you out for lunch, and we went. <laughs> Something like that all would have happened. That just never happens here, no. never. Most British women, if a guy came over and in, in Waitrose and went, excuse me, I couldn't help noticing you're stunning when you were by the bagels. Do you fancy a coffee? You would just reach for your rape alarm. I would just think, oh, he's so cringy, like, yeah. get him away from me. And most, most... And that's a shame. For most guys, the idea of approaching a girl sober, most of us would rather stay single, would rather die single, <laughs> without mating. Like an aphid with 24 hours to mate, you'd still find me with my one wing <laughs> going at the door. Well, thank you so much for meeting me. Thank you for it chatting to me. To meet you. <laughs> it's very civilised <laughs> of us. How English. If we were drunk, we'd have had a snob, but we should <laughs> It's true that our relationship with alcohol is complicated. We use it to give us courage and socialise, as well as to impress. The crazier ways to drink, the better. 
People always push themselves to the limit with crazy, and let's face it, pretty dangerous games such as snorting vodka off a spoon, tequila kamikaze where lemon is squirted into your eye, and taking it to a new level is vodka eyeballing, a dangerous trend where people pour a shot of neat vodka into their eyes. <laughs> I've travelled to Manchester to meet up with housemates Stephen and Eddie, two guys who have taken drinking games to the extreme. Hi! Nice to meet you, Emily. Nice to meet you. Stephen, Eddie. Cool. I draw a roll inside. Yeah! But before we talk about drinking, they've invited me to a rap battle that they're competing in. Back once again in Manchester for another Don't Flop event. Make some noise for this battle, please. Big up! So let's see what they've got then. In Liverpool, your potato's funny and cool. But in Manny, you should have been the tools that were bullied at school for thinking hip hop was Jennifer Lopez back to back with Ja Rule. <laughs> I think not. You look like members of Slipknot with Dick Rock. Yo, and you two can't even be classed as target practice. You give each other more pricks than the world's largest cactus. <laughs> Fair play. Liverpool's got talent like the Beatles and the Zootons. But these two jokers spit at the local bingo and get paid in coupons. <laughs> And you, stop thinking you're the cream of the crop. You're not. You're the fat kid off the estate you already has beans on his top. Laughter. The judges came to the decision and they gave it to Manchester. <laughs> Winning the battle is a big deal for Eddie and Stephen, and it's time to celebrate. So, where are we going? What are we doing? Just at the top of the road, the local off license. They drink! To be honest, I, I sourced different boozes. This isn't my usual one, like, where I can get the Polish beer, which I like so much. So, what do you normally buy? What, what are you getting? Polish beers, I've got very much into my Polish beer. Six twenty-five. Three of these. You'll get where you want to be. <laughs> Next stop is to see their friend James, who was supporting them at the battle. When you play drinking games, do you play drinking games regularly? Drinking games, it's like an addition. Like, today we're celebrating, you know what I mean? So we might have to get extra silly and, and drink a little bit more, and do you know what I mean? The reason why people drink fast at the start is because they just want to get from there to there. Yeah. From, from that point to the point of pissness as quickly as possible, and then from after that, it's not a problem. You just, you, you're just gone then. You just yeah. start carrying kind of drinking, do you know what I mean? Think, why do people feel the need to get drunk quickly? Is that because we can't... We, we're so, we're so excited to have that sensation of feeling on that level. No. Yeah, if you turn up at the pub and people have already been there before you and they're a bit more smashed, then they could probably egg you on to do something silly like take two or three Jaeger bombs straight in a row at the bar just to sort of catch up with them. Why do you think people want to go past that stage of being happily married? Most people are on the same level and everyone's willing to just get drunk quickly and we'll all get to that stage of life and I want to have fun. And that's where the fun begins. Right. I think it's time for drinking game. You better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Simple as. Shortest straw, biggest gulp with the drink. You have to do right. that. First time I saw vodka eyeball shots, it's not like we saw anyone do it, but we saw uh, in a film, Kevin and Perry go large, there's a, a DJ called Eyeball Paul, and that's his thing, to just take shots of vodka out of the eye. And then all of a sudden, I think when we got drunk one time, somebody did it. And it was just hilarious. It just sort of caught on from there. Oh no, right. Oh, that's short as hell, that one. Yeah. And that's then you've got to do an eyeball shot. Drink it all and then take an eyeball shot. Oh, he's going to open the eye up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, he loves it. Wow, does that hurt? Like, how does it feel? I'm not in that much pain now. I've got a little... My eye... It, it makes your eye water quite a bit. <laughs> it's, sting, it's stinging. It stings understand. a little bit, but only for a very short time. And I don't, I don't feel too bad right now. I'm, I'm very easy to accept a challenge. If I don't want to accept a challenge, I won't. You know, but I wanted to accept it, and I did it. Ooh. <laughs> it is like somebody's... Just how can you explain it? You just squirted lemon juice into your eyes. It does feel like, yeah, a burning pain. Because the trouble is, it's when you actually do it, that's not the problem. But it's when you 
open your eye after it, it'll, it'll have it, and then I think it reacts with the oxygen in the air, and then it just bang, it kicks in. It's... Ah! <laughs>